Manscaped is here to up your body grooming game. Manscaped has the revolutionary electric trimmer, the Lawnmower 3.0. It's cordless, it's waterproof, and it's guaranteed not to nick or snag your nuts or your chest because you can use it upstairs and downstairs. So go to manscaped.com, use code HRU for 20% off plus free shipping. Can you explain to people what the Free Speech Coalition is? Yeah, it's the Adult Industries Trade Association. So it started in 1991 more as like a legal association to help fight the, all the Supreme Court battles of obscenity charges mm-hmm. and stuff that were coming against the industry. And then it's morphed because obviously that's not a battle that we're fighting anymore. It's kind of morphed and developed more into like the only – like entity the adult industry has to like look to for resources or help or promotion or just any kind of like community. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I'm losing the word, but like just a community hub of like what we can do for not just producers anymore, but sometimes performers are becoming producers. So we also need to think about performers Mm -hmm. slash producer or performer slash director. And I think that's, kind of like my lucky point where I got in with Eric when I approached him in 2017. I was just like, I I have this passion and I want to get back, but I don't know how. And then he was like, oh, I think we may be able to figure something out. And then he kind of created this position for me of industry relations advocate. Mm -hmm. Um, I know Susie Q was there before me, but her wasn't really industry relations advocate. It was more like policy because they were fighting all of the different OSHA legal things that were going right, on. Right, the condom mandates. And all right, that. yeah. And she's much better at me than lobbying in that political sense. So right. I, I definitely was like, I'm not trying to do that. But, <laughs> <laughs> but I do really have a passion for wanting to help people and bring them all up to the same like level of understanding. Mm-hmm. And I think that's been my calling because like I started in 2018 in January and ever since then till now, I feel like I'm really – able to do what I wanted to Mm -hmm. do. Like people reach out to me and I have resources to give them and Mm -hmm. they're able to, to tap into those things and, you know, get a better understanding of legally what they're dealing with or financially or emotionally, or they, they don't feel like they're lost and don't have somewhere to turn. Like I, you know, Mm -hmm. I kind of want to create that feeling where people can trust FSC and know that we are trying to help, even if we don't get to things immediately because there's literally only four people in the office (laughs) yeah yeah like where we have it all on the table and we're trying to like do what we can to like collaborate with other people that can make these things happen sooner yeah and that this is actually a good time to bring up the fact that i mean all of these things cost money so if you are a fan of the industry and you want to donate to the fsc to help them continue to be advocates for the adult industry and provide resources that are desperately needed for performers. You can go to what is it? FSC. Yeah. Well, it's free. It's free speech coalition.com. You spell out the whole words, free speech coalition.com. And then they can go donate there. Yeah. There's there. I think there's a donate button link or something that, that we've had active. Um, I don't know. I could email it to you later, but there's a bunch of different services that we offer, like whether it be um, information about the codes of ethics that, should be practice on set or the performer's bills of rights, web security type information. So there's a lot of resources there, but that's definitely something that people can do is donate directly to FSC. And that enables us to just do more, collaborate with more production companies and affiliates that want to also do more for the industry. But like if we only have so much budget and so much time, right, so, right, right, so much right, we can do. Right. Because I know eventually like one of the bigger things that I think is so awesome that Eric proposes, he wants to kind of create like a scholarship fund. Oh, wow. And get production companies to donate into that to, you know, we nominate a performer, like a few performers and they get the scholarship so they can better their skills and talents in other fields, you know. Okay. So like to go to school yeah. or, oh, wow. Yeah, yeah. Really cool. Yeah, literally like, so, I mean, but. That's like so far away because yeah. like the immediate stuff is like mental health, legal, yeah. you know, banking discrimination. That's a big one because a lot of people are constantly left and right getting their bank shut down or their PayPal shut down. Yep. And how do they get that money that was there? Or what do they do now? So we get- Yeah. And that's a big problem. And so I had um, 
So my company used to be called Holly Randall Productions. I've since changed to something very like ambiguous. Mm. But when it was like I had problems getting insurance, I had okay. problems getting loans, credits yeah. because people and I couldn't figure out what was going on because my credit was great. Mm-hmm. I, you know, like I was making money. Mm-hmm. Um and finally like one one guy that I applied for um a credit card with like who denied me, I finally was like, "Why?" Yeah. And he was like, "Look, he was like, what do you do? I'm like, I'm a photographer. And he's like, what do you shoot? I'm like, people. He's like, what kind? Oh, and I was God. like, what are you getting at? He's like, look, he's like, basically Googled your name, saw what you do. And uh, they're, you know, they don't want to support the adult industry. They consider it a high risk industry. And I was like, and this was like in the middle of the recession. And I was like, I have so many friends who work in mainstream that are completely out on their asses. And I'm like still going strong. Yeah. So like, Who's what a are you fucking talking about? high? What's a high risk industry? What the fuck does that mean? Yeah, but the problem is that they're private institutions and so they can they, do whatever they yeah, want. Yeah, yeah, it's the reality. It yeah. is, and I, it, that's the part that sucks. Is I see people feeling like this is unfair. This is an outrage, and it is unfair, and it is an outrage. But it is fair because it is their business. Mm-hmm. It's not like a open public general, mm-hmm. you know, entity that's like for for everybody. You know. Yeah. Just like these things that are getting people's like, what is it? Instagram shut down. You know, yeah. there's no guarantee that says like we are allowed an in Instagram. Like nope. every That's human also on the a earth, private country, you know, yeah. a private company, they can do whatever they want. Yeah. So as much as I agree that it is unfair that they just shut people's accounts down that aren't even showing very explicit images sometimes. Mm-hmm. You know, it's their right. They can cancel whoever they want off of the platform. It's their platform. Yeah. And that sucks. <laughs> yeah, it does suck. Um, so I guess my piece of advice to people, um, like what what would you say to people who are dealing with those banking issues? I mean, because I always say to people, like if they're going to start a corporation, I'm like, do not put your porn name in that corporation. Oh, yeah. And don't make it anything that sounds like porn. Yeah. Like make it something super boring, boring, <laughs> ambiguous. And if necessary, um, create like a facade website. Cause I did that oh, for okay. this corporation and make it look like it's something else. See, yeah. that's a nice tip. I'm going to add into my tips too. Yeah. yeah so I, took, I, I don't want to say what my corporation. No, is you don't have to. People <laughs> can, like, look it up and they can find my address. Anyways. Um, but, uh, so yeah, the reason that, um, and I and I actually did it because I was I remember I was traveling to Mexico to go shoot, mm. and I was super paranoid about going through customs okay. because I was actually declaring all of my equipment. I wasn't trying to sneak stuff through, and yeah. I was petrified that they were going to look me up and they were going to see what I did for a living, and they weren't going to let me in the country because oh, wow. they were going to be afraid I was shooting porn, which I wasn't. I was actually out there to shoot for Playboy, but um, anyway, so I created like a facade and just like you know said I was a photography business, and then I just I've done some mainstream stuff, and mm-hmm. I just put up like the mainstream stuff I've done. Yeah. And so if anybody looked me up, they'd be like, "Oh, this is what she does. That's fine." Like, yeah. So that would be my recommendation. Like, create like I don't know, say you're a fucking professional organizer, yeah, or a sound bath healer or something. I don't know, come yeah. up with something that like isn't porn related. Yeah. No, that's very. Very true. Um, and that's usually especially like when girls are doing their PayPal like mm-hmm. and things like that. I always say like use a different name or if you have to absolutely use your name, like that's your accountant. Yeah. And you got to make – business manager. Yes. And you also have to make sure that when, you know, you invoice people or something, do not put anything adult related in there. Yeah. Make sure that people that are paying you do not put anything adult related in there. You yeah. Just be super careful. Yeah. So it's those kinds of tips and things that I just try and always Always give to people and mm-hmm. and have like gather from people like yourself that you just said that other thing about your website facade that you know if people weren't listening to this podcast they wouldn't know that until it hits them and then they're like dang if I would only known so I just try and be like collecting those resources and always like giving them out to people right. so they're if they read it it's up to them you know mm-hmm. at least I know we put it out there and made it available right. Um, I want to go back to what you said earlier about um, the Free Speech Coalition touching upon like a code of ethics. Could you expand upon that a little bit? Yeah, right now we're um, actually working with APAC and and the board members there to see if we can kind of create like an industry wide like best practices code of ethics and not just um, not just oh um, how to treat a performer on set, but how performers should also behave on set or, you know, what's expected of them that's going to be respectful for the location and Mm -hmm. the crew. And also, um, 
the types of things to kind of like have on set to make it a a nice, comfortable set for everybody, Mm -hmm. whether it's like from wipes to like the right kinds of snacks or something, Mm -hmm. water, having a a towel, Mm -hmm. things that sometimes get overlooked. Or um, one of the things that come came to me recently is like that I didn't even realize, but I thought was an awesome idea, like for really hard, strenuous scenes, the producer or director just call the person the next day and follow up like, hey, do you feel all right? Are you bruised? You you okay? Like, was the shoot great for you? Or it could even be an email or a phone call, but that, that was something that I was like, that is really thoughtful. And that's yeah. really cool. Cause I think and probably when you're on set and in the moment, you yeah. maybe haven't had time to process yes, it. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Or, or maybe you don't even feel the bruises yet or something, right, you know? Right, and right, right. So I thought that was just something because it's like, again, like, you know how people say, oh, it's just porn, but then it will only just be porn if you don't try and improve it somehow. Mm-hmm. And it can be, better it can be ethical it can make people feel awesome all the time Mm -hmm. even in the most like extreme situations so you know with the code of ethics too one of the recent things that got brought to my attention is like yeah even you know the the crew as in like the makeup artist the camera guy and those pa people like when we have a moratorium they don't have an only fans to fall back on Mm -hmm. so that's just something to keep in mind of like hmm okay well what could we do there to like create some kind of like cushion or area for people in those situations and Mm -hmm. i I just like kind of solving those problems like I don't want to leave anyone out. You know, yeah. we're all working together to create a final product that we're all going to benefit from. Right. So why aren't we all trying to do something to make like our work days as, you know, as good as possible for everybody? Yeah. Manscaped is here to up your body grooming game. Their lawnmower 3.0 is a revolutionary electric trimmer that will not only not nick or snag your nuts, but can also be used on your chest hair. If you get it in the perfect package 3.0, it will come with a bunch of liquid formulas to keep you feeling and smelling fresh all day. And for a limited time, you can also get a free travel bag and anti-chafing boxer briefs that come with it. So go to manscaped.com, use code HRU for 20% off plus free shipping. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed the show, make sure that you subscribe so you don't miss a single episode and go check out all the other videos. I film every single one of my podcasts. And if you want to listen to the audio version, I'm on iTunes and all the other podcast platforms. Visit hollyrandallunfiltered.com to find out more.